Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Halloween 2018. So Halloween is directed by David Gordon Green and the film is written by David Gordon Green and Danny McBride and the film stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, and Andy Matichak. So Halloween takes place 40 years later as Laurie Strode is preparing for the return of Michael Myers. She's been trying to tell her family that he's coming, but they all look at her as crazy. And when Michael Myers does make his return on Halloween, it's now up to Laurie Strode to finally put a stop to this whole thing. I did a franchise review of the entire Halloween franchise with my good friend Film Fan 0599. If you want to watch that video, you know you could go in the link uh, in the description down below if you want to watch that. But if you saw our franchise review and you saw really my bit where I reviewed the first one, I gave it a positive review and I have to say that I enjoyed it. It's not one of my favorite Halloween horror movies like I noticed for many people but still I do enjoy it and I really admire the craftsmanship that really went behind the original 1978 film and so the fact that this one is ignoring the entire really timeline after the original one it's an interesting idea and after seeing the idea that they had for this one going for it and this one taking place 40 years it just had me genuinely interested and of course Jamie Lee Curtis coming back as Laurie Strode and John Carpenter is actually back to do the music for this film as well as be an executive producer. I was really hoping that this could bring back the spirit of Halloween in my own humble opinion and I have to say it does. I truly do think that this one is a lot of fun. And of course, I want to start off with the performances for this film. The one I of course have to comment on is Jamie Lee Curtis because as I just stated, she is back as Laurie Strode and I have to say, she does not lose a single beat with Laurie Strode and she does a really good job of capturing just how scarred she is from the events of Halloween 1978. She just wants Michael to just go away forever. She just wants him to be gone and you could tell that she is just ready to face Michael and I think she captures that really well. She just gives such a fantastic performance in this movie. Judy Greer, I also thought was really good. She plays Laurie Strode's daughter, and I thought she did a really good job, especially when we get to later on the movie without spoiling anything. I do think, especially when we get to that point of the movie, I do think she does a really good job. There is one scene with Judy Greer that was a little odd to me, and obviously I'll get to that later, but really, aside from that one scene, I thought she did a really good job here. And then we have new coming actress Andy Matichak who plays the granddaughter of Laurie Strode and I also thought she was really good. I actually really enjoyed her character and I really enjoyed following her and I thought the way Andy portrayed her character was very interesting in my opinion. I thought Will Patton also did a really good job and honestly the performances for even the characters that, let's be honest, we know eventually what happens to the characters, but for example, Allison's a friend, her blonde friend who is a babysitter, she's really good. There's this kid, the kid that she babysits, he's also really good. I'll talk a little bit more about him uh, in a little bit actually, but he's really good and really anyone else that pops up, even if it's characters that only have one scene, I thought the performances actually weren't too bad. I'd say at worst, when it comes to performances, there's maybe only a couple of okay ones, but that's only at the movie's worst. Now, the interesting thing about this movie is that it is directed by David Gordon Green, who is known for directing movies like Pineapple Express, Your Highness, and obviously there's other projects that he's done, but just to name off a couple. I have to say he does a very good job with his direction. I thought he did a very good job of capturing the Halloween spirit, and you could really feel his passion. Like, you could tell that David Gordon Green admires what John Carpenter did with the 
original and obviously this one isn't necessarily a slow burner like the original was but as far as like keeping up with the spirit uh i do feel like david Gordon green does a really good job at that and he has some really great camera work going with this film there is this one take scene it is probably the scene out of all the scenes that i would say really captures halloween the most that entire one take scene was just so impressive and then when we get to the climax what he does with the climax which you know i'll talk about the climax a little later on but what what he did with the climax direction wise was truly impressive and not only does he direct halloween but he also happens to write this movie with Danny McBride, which was very interesting to me. And there's definitely points where you could really feel their touch because the movie does have humor going for it. There were definitely points where I was laughing. I brought up that kid not too long ago and he's definitely the biggest highlight as far as comedy goes, as far as humor goes. He was the biggest highlight. That kid may not have had that much screen time, but man, when he was on screen, he really did steal the show. On top of the movie having very good direction and pretty good writing, the cinematography for the movie looks absolutely great gorgeous i love how the movie is shot i love the color palettes i love the look of it there's moments where you could tell they get really creative the climax is like one of the biggest examples when you go in the kid's bedroom actually there's some shots inside that room that look really nice when we see the characters outside in the neighborhood obviously cinematography really looks good there too and like i said earlier john carpenter is back to not only produce this movie but he is uh, one of the music composers for this movie. He's never lost uh, his touch at all with it. He still continues to turn in really great work because the score in this movie, it still brings that Halloween touch to it. The Halloween theme, it's not exactly exactly like the original, but you still do get it and you know, it sounds a little bit more different. Uh, there's a little bit more of synth to it. It still sounds really top notch. It still really gets you involved in the atmosphere and just having someone with a true talent like John Carpenter to still do the music as well as a couple of other people I know that were in charge of this music too. They really did a good job of bringing something to this. And Michael Myers. All I have to say is, yeah, he's back. He is absolutely back. And I really enjoyed every minute of him being on screen. He is still the Michael Myers that you really enjoy. He is still intimidating. Like when he's out to kill someone, I really feel his presence. And his mask actually does look good again because it's not something I really touched upon when I reviewed the original Halloween franchise with Film fan but yeah for really a majority of that franchise the mask did not look good at all so it is nice to go back to a halloween movie that actually has a really good michael myers mask the kills i thought were really well done it's brutal it's violent but i think it definitely works i did think they actually got quite creative with the violence like for example during the one take scene michael he grabs a hammer and he uses that hammer to kill someone in the kitchen we don't see it on screen but we hear the sound effects and even just hearing the sound effect of him hitting someone with that hammer it's still like oh man it's just so brutal and then obviously afterwards you get like the bloody image like yeah this is michael myers and he is not messing around. This is also a very well paced movie in my humble opinion. There is not a single moment in this movie where I thought it was dragging or I felt a little bit bored. Honestly, from beginning to end, I was always into this movie. It is such a well paced movie. And I think the editing for the movie, for the most part at least, I think it's a very well edited movie. I think the editing is very smooth. I would never had a problem with the pace personally because whereas the John Carpenter 1978 movie that's definitely more of a slow burn it's definitely taking its time to build its atmosphere and for Michael Myers to get to his kills this one really it just cuts to the chase this is a 
fast paced movie. Nothing about this screams really a slow burn. It is a fast paced movie in my opinion at least from beginning to end. This movie was already fun as it is before the climax but I'm not gonna lie, when we get to the climax of this movie, it elevates that fun level even more. I was all, all in on it. I was all in on this climax, just fully 100% invested. It was so intense. It's easily one of the best climaxes that this franchise has to offer. It's everything you want to see in Halloween when you get to that climax. Everything about it is like, yeah, this is Halloween, but it's just a very intense climax and it's very well structured. All I'll say without spoiling anything for those that obviously haven't seen this movie, the final shot in this movie is really cool. Now, when it comes to my issues with Halloween, however, I will say that there are these podcasters in this movie and they don't really feel needed. Um, it starts off as something interesting and then it eventually gets wasted and you can kind of figure out why. But the podcasters, while I do like the idea of them wanting to find out more of what happened on Halloween night of 1970, a and wanting to get these details from Laurie Strode. I like that, but where it eventually ends, it just kind of felt pointless at the end of the day. We do get a new Dr. Loomis because, you know, Donald Pleasance, he's no longer around, but we do have a new Dr. Loomis really here. And as far as he goes, uh, you know, he's there. He's, he's there. He's definitely not the charismatic personality of Dr. Loomis. I wasn't really all that interested in the character, to be honest. And the actor, he's okay. Uh, he is one of those rare performances in this film that I do feel is just okay. And then the boyfriend in this movie, the boyfriend to the blonde babysitter, uh, he was another performance that I didn't think was that good either. He was also just fine. Now, while I did say for the most part, this is a very well edited movie and I do think the editing in this movie is absolutely brilliant. There are some moments where I do think the editing in this movie is genuinely jarring. Luckily, it's not the entire movie because that definitely would have been a major distraction for my experience. But yeah, there are certain moments where how we get to a certain scene and we transition to another one. It it did feel kind of jarring in my opinion. One of them, and this is where I guess I'll bring up Judy Greer's one scene. There is this one scene where Judy Greer is explaining to her daughter about her mother and how she raised her and try to prepare her. And you get this very quickly edited flashback scene. And that's one of the moments where I didn't think the editing was all that great. I guess since I'm bringing up Judy Greer, that is the one scene where I thought she was robotic. Everything else, I was like, okay, she's doing a very good job delivering her lines and I find her performance believable, especially in the climax. But in that one scene, the way she's delivering her lines, it is so robotic. Robotic. And I don't know what happened there when they were shooting that scene, but it just felt so jarring. While I did say I really liked the violence in this movie, and I thought the violence worked for the overall story and atmosphere, there is one scene where I did think it was genuinely grotesque and very, very unnecessary. Like, I did not think it really needed to happen. And yes, there's a lot of bloody moments in this movie but I do understand you know for the case of the story but in that one moment I'm just like you really didn't need to go that far and all I'll say is head head just to give you a little hint of what I'm talking about. While I do think the movie does a good job of really keeping with that tone of Halloween, it does have those once in a while moments where it doesn't feel like a Halloween film. It can feel like a modern horror film. The biggest example of that is when we cut to this Halloween party at this high school. Uh, in scenes like that, you don't feel like you're watching Halloween. You feel like you're watching a modern horror film but that's only once in a while when that happens but when it does happen it is just a little bit distracting in my opinion and my biggest problem with this movie it is the moment that bothers me the most about this movie is this twist i don't know what david gordon green and danny mcbride were thinking 
but that twist was genuinely stupid in my opinion. I think it's one of those twists that just could have been removed altogether and I don't think it would have mattered all that much. I don't think it would really hinder the movie at all all as much as i do really enjoy the movie and i genuinely do think this is a really fun movie but when we get to that twist no that just no overall halloween 2018 is a satisfying experience i genuinely had so much fun watching this movie and you know i am someone that does like the original halloween 2 as well but it was cool to get an installment that takes place 40 years after the original seeing how much this event has really affected laurie strode and her preparing for michael myers that was really cool jamie lee curtis is still great i really enjoyed judy greer and and Matichek, and really pretty much the other performances I really enjoy here too. I think David Gore Green does a really good job of keeping up with the atmosphere and still making me feel so invested in it. I think him and Danny McBride have crafted a pretty good screenplay. Yes, granted, it has some issues, but I do think overall they did a pretty good job with the screenplay and making a very fun Halloween, a movie that I could definitely rewatch around this time. I can see why there's going to be some fans out there that don't enjoy this one. That's perfectly understandable, but for me personally, I can say I'm definitely satisfied and I'm going to give Halloween 2018 three out of four stars so everyone in the comments down below let me know what did you think of Halloween 2018 and as I said earlier in this video I did do a franchise review with film fan 0599 where we did review all eight of the Halloween movies and the original franchise from the John Carpenter 1978 Halloween film all the way to Yes, Halloween Resurrection. So if you want to see that video, I will leave a link in the description down below to that. Or you could just wait until the end of the video so you could click on the link from there. And that was a very fun video to do. Thank you very much for that experience, film fan. And of course, everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. Hope you all have a safe Halloween. Ooh. And don't forget that I will always have... Talk about where? <laughs>